Hello everyone, this is Lakshman. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. In the today's session, I'm sharing the five most common asked core Java entry questions and answers for freshers as well as experienced candidates. The first question is, what is the difference between method overloading and method overriding? So this is one of the frequently asked entry questions for freshers as well as experienced candidates. So here experienced candidate means up to four years experienced candidate, you may expect this question. These five questions, you can expect up to uh, four years of experience candidate uh, as a Java developer position, okay? So now let us see uh, the major differences between method overloading and uh, method overriding. Now let's discuss about overloading. When a class has more than one method, having same name, but different in parameters, it is called method overloading. That means method name is same, but the method signature is different. That is nothing but method overloading. Whereas overriding means when a method of super class is overridden in subclass to provide a more specific implementation, it is called method overriding. Okay, so whatever the method available in the super class, if you overridden that method in the subclass to provide more specific implementation, then those methods nothing but method overriding okay the next thing is argument type must be different in overloading whereas in overriding argument type must be same okay including order also the next difference the signature of the overloaded method must be different that means method name and arguments or parameters are different whereas in overriding the method signature must be same that means method name and arguments also same okay the next difference is in method overloading the written type can be same or different so no problem at all the written type must be same or different whereas in method overriding the written type must be same until Java 1.4 version. But from Java 1.5 onward, method overriding can be done by changing the covariant written type. Okay. The next thing is method overloading is generally performed in the same class only, whereas method overriding is performed in two classes through inheritance concept. Okay. The next concept is, the next difference is, private, static and final method can be overloaded in Java. Whereas, in overriding concept, private, static and final methods not applicable. Okay. The next difference is, method resolution in overloading always takes care by the compiler based on reference type. So, whereas method resolution in overriding always take care by the JVM based on runtime object. The next difference is method overloading is also known as compile time polymerism, static polymerism or early binding. Whereas method overriding is also known as runtime polymerism, dynamic polymerism or late binding. Okay. The next entry question is difference between abstract lines and interface. This is also one of the most frequently asked entry questions. An abstract class is declared by the abstract keyword. Okay. An interface is declared by the interface keyword. The subclasses use the extends keyword to extend the abstract class, whereas implements keyword is used to implement the interfaces. Okay. An abstract class can have final, non-final, static, and non-static variables. But if you declare final variable, then you must initialize it. Otherwise, the compiler will throw an exception and compile that. An interface has all the variables is by default static and final. Okay, so you must initialize them. Otherwise, the compiler will throw an exception at compile time. An abstract class is more flexible than the interface in declaring the method. 
so you can define abstract methods with the protected modifier also in the interface the static method and the default method is supported since java 8 but in the abstract class you could define the static and the default methods before java 8 whereas an interface has all the methods are public and abstract by default you can declare a method with the public private abstract default static and strict fp are permitted if you try to use a protected modifier then it will throw an exception at the compile time because it is not permitted the protected modifier since java 8 we can define the default method and the static method in the interface in java 9 we can define private method also the next difference is an abstract class can implement multiple interfaces but it, it cannot extend more than one class an interface can extend the more than one interface an interface can extend other interface but it cannot any class next difference is an abstract class would be a good choice when you want to achieve 1% to 100% abstraction. It should be used when multiple classes want to provide different implementations and also want to share some common implementation. Whereas an interface would be a good choice when you want to achieve 100% abstraction. It means when multiple classes want to provide different implementation to the only method signature. The next difference is an abstract class can have a constructor. By default, JVM provides the default constructor. You can also provide the constructor explicitly. So we cannot create the object of the abstract class. The constructor can only be called during constructor chaining and used to initialize common variables which are declared inside an abstract class. An interface does not contain any constructor because we cannot create an object of the interface. In abstract class, the constructor is used to initialize the variables of an abstract class. But the interface does not contain any variables. It just contains the final variables. The next difference is an abstract class can have the main method because in abstract class, we can define the abstract and the non-abstract methods. Whereas before Java 8, an interface could not have the main method in Java. Uh, whereas before java 8 an interface could not have the main method in the interface but after java 8 version you can create the main method in the interface because the main method is always using the static keyword so from java 8 it allows declaring static method also so that is the reason from java 8 onwards interface also contains the main method the next entry question is difference between list and set list allows duplicate elements whereas set does not allow duplicate elements list is an order collection it maintains the insertion order which means upon displaying the list content it will display the elements in the same order in which they got inserted into the list whereas set is unordered collection it does not maintain any order there are few implementations of set which maintains the order which is linked asset. The next difference is list iterator can be used to traverse a list in both the direction like forward and backward. Whereas in set, however, it cannot be used a traverse method. We can use iterator to traverse a set. The next difference is list implementations are array list and linked list. Whereas set implementations are hash set, linked set, tree set, etc. The next difference is if there is a need to maintain the insertion order irrespective of the duplicity, then the list is best option. Both the implementation of list interface like array list and the linked list pass the elements in the insertion order. Whereas if the requirement is to have only unique values, then set is your best. Uh, option okay and it also maintains the unique and it also maintains the unique values only okay 
The next question is why string is immutable in Java? This is also most frequent asked entry question. So string in Java is a final class and an immutable class. That means once we create the object, we cannot change that value. Okay. That means once we create the object, we cannot alter the object. So the string is most widely used data structure in Java. The string constant pool is special storage in heap memory that cache in the string literals and reusing them. So whenever we create a string, the JVM checks whether the string already exists in the string constant pool or not. If the string already presented, the reference of the existing string will be returned instead of creating a new object. So here I have created three strings with the same different reference variable. See here string str equal to by Lexisa. This this declaration is nothing but string literal. Okay. So see here example. So this is the string constant pool in the heap memory. Okay. I have created three strings with the same reference. Okay. So these three uh, references are pointing to the same object only. Okay, suppose if string is not immutable, then what will happen? These three strings, uh, these three string references are pointing to the same object. One string reference change, then it will impact to the other strings also. So that's why strings are immutable. So there are few factors are there why string is immutable. Suppose security wise. So in Java, security parameters also represented a as string like in network connections, opening files, database connection, URLs, usernames, and passwords, etc. Suppose if the string is mutable, then any hacker could change the reference value and break the security. So that is the reason string must be immutable. Suppose if you take synchronizer also, due to the immutable nature of string, it is thread safe. Suppose multiple threads are running, but they cannot be changed. Because if the if a thread change the value, then instead of modifying the same, a new string would be created in the string pool. This eliminates the requirements of doing synchronization. Now let us consider performance. As we have seen, the string constant pool enhance the memory storage and performance. Since the string is the most widely used data structure, it improving the performance. The next question is. What is the difference between checked exception and the unchecked exception? So this is also one of the most frequent last entry questions for precious Java developers. Checked exception. Any exception that is checked by the compiler during compile time is called checked exception. So checked exceptions are the classes which inherit from throwable class. Except runtime exception and error. Examples for checked exceptions are IO exception and file not found exception, etc. Whereas unchecked exception, unchecked exceptions are the classes which inherit runtime exception and error. They are not checked by the compiler at compile time. Instead, they are checked at the runtime. So, example for unchecked exceptions are null pointer exception and arithmetic exception, etc. So, these are the most common after entry questions from core java irrespective of your experience okay you might be fresher or what two years of experience candidate or four years or five years of experience developer definitely at least two to three entry questions must be asked from these five percent if you want anyone this documentation please comment in the comment section i will provide this document also okay so if you really helpful this video, please hit the like button and also share to your friends. So we will meet in the next video. So thank you for watching.